Why do people sweat when they're nervous? Feelings of nervousness or excitement trigger certain responses in your nervous system. Including the production of certain hormones that activate sweat glands. The sweat glands most likely to respond to such hormones. Are those in your armpits and the palms of your hands. Many people refer to sweating in these conditions as breaking out in a cold sweat. What causes a yawn? When you are bored or tired you sometimes give a big yawn. Yawning happens because you are not breathing deeply enough. Oxygen, the gas needed to run body processes, and carbon dioxide, the waste gas produced by these processes. Travel in your bloodstream and enter and exit your body through your lungs. When you don't breathe deeply enough, too much carbon dioxide builds up in your body and your brain gets the message. Telling you to breathe more deeply to fix the problem. A yawn is a great big breath that clears carbon dioxide from your lungs and forces you to take in fresh, oxygen rich air. Sometimes a series of yawns is required. Scientists don't know why yawning seems to be contagious. But it usually is, when one person yawns, others often start yawning, too. What are animals? Animals are all the creatures belonging to the kingdom Animalia. Ranging in complexity from simple organisms like sponges to highly developed human beings. Some of the other kingdoms are planty, which encompasses things like grass, trees, and flowers. And fungi, which are things like mold and mushrooms. Animals make up at least three quarters of all the species on Earth. And they are distinguished from plants and other organisms by their ability to move. Even tiny animals have muscles and therefore can get around to find food or a mate. Or to get away from enemies. While humans are animals. Often when people use the word animal they are referring to all animals except humans. Sometimes people are referring specifically to mammals warm-blooded creatures like dogs, cows, or lions as opposed to birds, reptiles, or fish. Can a turtle climb out of its shell? A turtle can no more climb out of its shell than a person can remove his or her backbone. The turtle's shell is fused, or attached, to its backbone, ribs, and parts of its shoulder and hip bones. If an empty turtle shell is found, it means that turtle has died, and its shell is all that remains. What plant has the biggest flower?
the largest flower in the world has a rather unpleasant name and an equally unpleasant scent. The stinking corpse lily, or Rafflesia arnoldi. This rare and endangered. Flower grows in the jungles of the Southeast Asian islands Borneo and Sumatra. The flowers are orange-brown in color with large white speckles. They can measure 3 feet across and weigh up to 25 pounds, 11 kilograms. Because the stinking corpse lily is a parasite plant which means that it gets its nourishment from other plants it has no stem or leaves. The flower seeds attach themselves to jungle vines and burrow into the vine's tissue. Where they germinate and grow. Eventually a blossom pushes through the vine and grows to huge proportions. What do the letters on M and M candies stand for? During the 1940s, when M and M candies were first introduced, two men headed the company that made them. Mr. Mars and Mr. Murray ran the M and M candies company, which has since become Mars Incorporated. And they put the initials of their last names on the colorful treats. The letters used to be printed on the candies in black, but since 1954 the MS have been white. How do submarine pilots know where they are going when they are underwater? If they are not too far below the surface, a periscope is used. This tall, rotating, tube-shaped instrument can be raised above the water's surface to view surroundings. Using a series of mirrors and lenses inside to relay images. Beyond that, submarines use sonar, sound waves, to make echo soundings of their surroundings. Transmitted sound waves are reflected off objects or the ocean floor. The time it takes for these sound waves to be reflected back indicates how far away things are located. The echoes are then converted into electrical signals that appear on a display screen. Which gives a picture similar to that of an airport's radar screen of surrounding waters. How do birds fly? Birds have one major feature that distinguishes them from all other animals, feathers. These strong but lightweight feathers, in combination with the structure of their bodies, allow birds to fly with amazing skill and speed. Many birds have hollow bones, making their bodies very lightweight. And the muscles that move their wings are extremely powerful. Birds fly, basically, by flapping their wings and using their tails to steer. A bird's wing is a very complicated instrument that can be adjusted in many different ways to control the flight's speed, angle, height, and direction. The wider base of the wing, the part closer to the bird's body, gives it support. While the tip of the wing propels the bird forward. The way the bird's body is built. Particularly the shape and structure of the wing, determines the way the bird flies.
Some fly at high altitudes, while others stay low to the ground. Some fly quickly with small, rapid wing movements, others flap their wings slowly but powerfully. What are bugs? Most people use the word bug when talking about insects like beetles, bees, and butterflies. And other small, many-legged creatures that crawl, jump, or fly, such as spiders and centipedes. All of these critters belong to the same phylum, called Arthropoda. Which also includes crustaceans, like lobsters and crabs. Arthropods have hard skeletons on the outside of their bodies. Called exoskeletons, and they also have jointed limbs, arthropod means jointed feet. Arthropods make up more than 80% of the world's animal species. The word bug does correspond with an official category, though, in the scientific world. A true bug is classified as an insect that belongs to the order Hemiptera. The insects in this order can be recognized by the X-shaped pattern on their backs. A design formed by their wings at rest. They also have sucking mouth parts and a hardened gula, which is the underside of the head. The 30,000 species of the Hemipteran order include bedbugs, fire bugs, and some water bugs. What is quicksand? Quicksand is regular sand into which water is forced from below. Usually an underground spring supplies the water that pushes up into a deposit of sand. The extra water makes it so the sand particles don't hold together as well. And they become unstable to walk on. Quicksand is like a thick soup of sand and water it isn't as watery as a puddle but isn't as firm as regular sand either. A large person or animal that strays into quicksand which often looks deceptively dry on top can sink quickly, even disappearing under its surface. Deposits of quicksand are rare, and they usually aren't very deep. If you do find yourself sinking into the muck, try to hold onto something solid and pull yourself out. Or lie on your back with your arms out as if you were floating in water and wait for rescuers to come. It's easy enough to float in quicksand if you stay fairly still. Struggling to get out, on the other hand, only makes you sink faster. How does a sprouting seed know which way is up? Earth's gravity is the force that guides the direction of a sprouting seed's roots and shoots. In scientific experiments where plants are put in zero-gravity environments, they grow in all directions. Roots respond to the pull of gravity, which generates from the center of Earth. By growing toward it, and shoots, or stems, respond to gravity by growing away from it. Scientists do not completely understand how a plant's cells receive the signals that point different parts in different directions. 
but simple experiments show that no matter which way a seed is planted, with the root producing part facing down or up, the roots will grow down and the shoots will grow up. Heavy starch grains found in certain cells help the growing plant keep its balance by shifting their place if the plant loses its upright position. This shifting directs growth hormones to affected areas in the plant. These hormones will cause new growth in stems and roots to correct their position in relation to gravity. In the shoot, for example, growth hormones will make cells toward the bottom grow faster than cells toward the top, pushing the shoot upward. Which country is the smallest? The smallest country in the world is Vatican City. It is located on 108.7 acres, or 44 hectares. Which is not even half a square mile, in the city of Rome, Italy. Vatican City is where the central government of the Roman Catholic Church is located. The home of the Pope who is leader of the church is also located there. About 850 people are citizens of Vatican City, which is ruled by the Pope. Though a governor and a council actually run it. Vatican City has its own money postage stamps, flag, and diplomatic corps. Monaco, which is less than one square mile, around two square kilometers. In area, is the second smallest country in the world. How is an alligator different from a crocodile? Alligators and crocodiles share many similarities and are close relatives. Both belonging to the order Crocodilia. Some distinguishing features can help in telling them apart, however. Alligators usually have broader, flatter, rounder snouts than crocodiles, crocodile snouts are narrow and V-shaped. Both have extremely powerful jaws, but the wider jaw of the alligator has the edge. Another difference can be seen in the way their jaws fit together. In alligators, the upper jaw is wider than the lower jaw, so when their mouths are closed, the upper teeth can be seen outside the mouth, while the lower teeth are almost completely hidden. Crocodiles' upper and lower jaws are about the same width. So when their mouths are closed, their teeth, also visible outside the mouth, interlock. The crocodile's large fourth tooth on the bottom is especially noticeable. Both animals tend to prefer freshwater environments, but crocodiles have a higher tolerance for salt water than alligators because they have salt glands on their tongues that help them get rid of excess salt. Crocodile skin also looks different from alligator skin because crocodiles have small black specks all over their bodies. While alligators have them only around their jaws. These dots are special sensory pits that help the animals. Detect the presence of prey and sense changes in water pressure. Crocodiles are thought to be more aggressive than alligators, and while that is true for some species, 
There are several different kinds of both animals, and there are many behavioral differences among them. What is outer space? Outer space refers to the area that exists beyond Earth's atmosphere. Our atmosphere is divided into several layers based on the temperatures found in each of those layers. The troposphere is the layer closest to Earth, it extends about 5 to 10 miles. 8 to 16 kilometers, above the planet's surface. Most of our weather rain, snow, sleet comes from the troposphere. Temperatures in the troposphere can fall as low as minus 112 degrees Fahrenheit, minus 80 degrees Celsius. The next layer, called the stratosphere, stretches from 11 to 30 miles. 17 to 48 kilometers, above Earth's surface. The stratosphere contains the ozone layer, which protects all life on Earth from the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays. Temperatures gradually rise in the stratosphere, reaching a high of around 28 degrees Fahrenheit, minus 2 degrees Celsius. The stratosphere is followed by the mesosphere, which goes to about 50 miles, 80 kilometers, above Earth. Temperatures drop well down into the negatives in the mesosphere, but in the next layer. The thermosphere, the sun's radiation heats the air to around 1,100 degrees Fahrenheit, 600 degrees Celsius. The thermosphere ends at about 250 to 300 miles, 400 to 480 kilometers, above Earth. The final layer is called the exosphere, and at that level, the atmosphere is so thin as to be virtually non-existent. There is no line drawn in space marking the end of Earth's atmosphere and the beginning of outer space. But many scientists agree that outer space begins somewhere around 600 miles, 960 kilometers, above Earth. Can flying fish really fly? There are about 40 species known as flying fish. These small fish, around 18 inches, or 45 centimeters, long, are found in warm waters all over the world. They don't technically fly, but they can glide through the air, using wing-like fins and a powerful tail. When chased by a predator, a flying fish heads straight for the water's surface at a rapid speed. With its fins tucked in close to its body. As it breaks the surface of the water, it spreads its wings and uses its flapping tail. Still underwater, to give it an extra boost. Flying fish don't go very. High usually just a few feet above the water but they can glide for fairly long distances. As it reaches the water after a glide, a flying fish can use its tail to propel it up again for another run. Like a skipping rock that makes several bounces. A single glide can take a flying fish as far as 600 feet, 180 meters. And the total distance traveled over a series of consecutive glides can be as far as 1,300 feet, 400 meters.
Can pets see what's on television? When dogs and cats look at the television, they don't see the same things that you do. They can see little or no color and can't identify objects that appear on the flat screen. But they are attracted to the movement that they see on television. Action on the screen probably stirs their hunting instincts. Making them think they are watching small, scurrying prey. Dogs and cats may also show interest in some of the sounds that come from television shows. A dog barking on TV may make your pet dog bark back. Or a ringing doorbell in a TV show might prompt your dog to get up and go to the door. How many time zones are there in the United States? The continental United States, meaning the 48 states on the North American continent, which excludes Hawaii and Alaska, is divided into four time zones. From east to west, they are, Eastern, Central, Mountain, and Pacific. Each of these time zones is one hour apart, with times being successively earlier as you move west. So if it's 3 p.m. Eastern Time, it's 2 p.m. Central Time, 1 p.m. Mountain Time, and Noon Pacific Time. The Alaska time zone is one hour behind Pacific time, so when it's noon in California, it's 11. 00 a.m. in Alaska. Hawaii's time zone for part of the year is one hour behind Alaska. Hawaii does not participate in daylight saving time, however, so during that period. From April to October, when most of the U.S. states have set their clocks forward one hour. Hawaii stays at standard time and is two hours behind Alaska. Why is the North Star important? The North Star, also known as Polaris, is important because it is the star toward which the northern axis of Earth points. It appears to shine directly over the North Pole. In ancient times, centuries before the use of navigational equipment, travelers knew that they could count on Polaris to tell them which direction was north. When were knives, forks, and spoons first used? While knives have been used as tools, weapons, and even to help in food preparation to carve up large pieces of meat. For example it wasn't until the Middle Ages, a period ranging from roughly a D500 to around 1500. That people began regularly using knives to get food from their plates to their mouths. Since forks weren't in use yet, people in that era used knives with narrow blades and pointed ends to spear their food and then eat it. Historians have pointed out that these weapon like utensils gave the dinner hour the potential for serious violence. 
in the late 1600s table knives became blunter and wider. A shape that made them more useful in catching the food that sometimes fell off forks and spoons. People have been using spoons for centuries. And these helpful scoopers were probably among the first eating tools developed by early humans. In prehistoric times spoons were made of curved pieces of shells or wood. During the Middle Ages royal and wealthy citizens used spoons made of precious metals like gold and silver. Common folks had to make do with tin or pewter spoons. As eating instruments, forks are the latecomers in the utensil world. While the ancient Greeks used two tined forks to stabilize food they were carving and serving. And table forks were used by the wealthy in the Middle East and other countries in what is now Eastern Europe. The concept of table forks did not become widespread in Western Europe until the 16th and 17th centuries. At first, people didn't understand the need for a fork they had spoons and knives and. Of course, their hands, to pick up food. But forks came to be popular symbols of social status among the wealthy. And eventually the general population came to accept their use as well. Another kind of utensil chopsticks came into being around 5,000 years ago in China. Historians believe chopsticks evolved from twigs people. Used to grab pieces of food out of large cooking pots. Over time, these twigs were carved into sticks that worked well when picking up small pieces of food. Bye. AD 500, chopsticks had spread to other Asian countries, with some differences among them in style and size. So why is it called the bald eagle? Because one meaning of the word bald that is not commonly used anymore refers to white markings. Due to excessive hunting, environmental pollution, and loss of habitat. The bald eagle population became dangerously low at one point, prompting the U.S. Congress to pass a law protecting it. Bald eagles were once listed by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service as an endangered species. Meaning they were close to being extinct. Thanks to the laws protecting it, these birds have rebounded a bit. They are now listed as threatened, which means they are not as close to being extinct as they once were. But their numbers are still few, only about 50,000 in the United States, and it is illegal to hunt them. What is a vegetarian? A vegetarian is a person that does not eat any animal flesh, including meat, poultry, or seafood. A vegetarian diet can consist of fruits, vegetables, breads, nuts, and pasta as well as dairy products like cheese and milk. Some vegetarians, known as vegans, vegans, do not eat anything produced by an animal. So they eliminate all dairy and products made with eggs from their diets as well. Vegetarians have existed since ancient times. 
when certain religious or ethnic groups advocated the special diet for religious reasons or health concerns. Or on moral grounds, believing that killing any living creature for food was wrong. The reasons people choose to be vegetarians today are much the same as they once were. With health concerns playing a large role. Many people believe that a vegetarian diet rich in fiber and low in fat, as opposed to the higher fat quantities found in meat-heavy diets reduces the risk of heart disease and some forms of cancer. What causes day and night? Besides orbiting around the sun, Earth turns in a circle, or rotates from west to east on its own axis an imaginary line running through the center of the planet spinning like a top. A complete rotation takes about 24 hours, or one day. When the part of Earth on which we live is turned away from the light of the sun, we have nighttime. At the same time, people on the other side of the world have daytime. As Earth continues its movement, we move toward the sun's light, and day comes. What's wrong with your eyes if you're color blind? The back of your eye the retina is lined with two special types of nerve cells. Both named because of their shapes. Rods see black and white and work well in poor light. While cones see colors and fine details, but only in bright light. When you see an object, each rod and cone cell sends a signal to the brain sight center where information about color, form, shading, and light combine to create a visual image. Cones contain substances that respond separately to each of the colors red, green, or blue, which combine to make other colors. When a person is color blind, he or she is usually missing some of these substances in his or her cones. It is very rare that someone has none of these substances and sees everything in shades of black, white, and gray. The most common form of color blindness is the inability to see. The difference among some shades of green and some shades of red. The condition usually doesn't cause many problems in everyday life. Though it is important to learn if a child has the defect as soon as possible because the color red is often used as a danger signal, as in traffic lights, for example. Many more males than females are color blind, and the condition is inherited. Why are there zoos? Zoological gardens commonly known as zoos were created for a number of reasons. Since ancient times people have captured wild animals for collections. For the pleasure of owning and observing them, and in order to learn more about them and their habits. Very few people can travel to the wilds of Africa and other exotic places. But by visiting a zoo they can see firsthand some of the world's huge variety of creatures. Today, 
most large cities have zoos. People can learn more about animals there and about how to protect the native habitats from which these creatures come. Many zoos are havens where endangered animals can live protected and where there are breeding. Programs that try to increase the population of such creatures to keep them from extinction. Zoos also provide homes for animals that have been injured and could no longer survive in the wild. Zoos both entertain and educate those who visit them. What is ozone? Ozone is a sharp-smelling gas that is a form of oxygen. There is a layer of ozone in the upper atmosphere, about 15 miles, 25 kilometers, above Earth. That layer helps protect us from the harmful ultraviolet rays of the sun. Without the ozone layer, too many of those rays would get through. Making it difficult for plants and animals to live. During the 1970s, scientists became aware that certain chemicals called chlorofluorocarbons, or CFCs, were making the ozone layer thin and even causing some holes. CFCs were used in aerosol cans, air conditioners, and refrigerators. By the mid-1990s, the United States and many other countries had banned the use of CFCs. Ozone also exists in the lower atmosphere. But while the ozone in the upper atmosphere is beneficial, that in the lower atmosphere causes air pollution. When sunlight interacts with the fumes from cars and trucks, Ozone is the main ingredient of the smog that is produced. In large amounts, ozone can cause headaches, itchy eyes, and lung problems in people. It can also harm other animals and plants. And it damages rubber tires and the outside surfaces of buildings. Which lizard is the biggest? The Komodo dragon, part of the monitor family of lizards, is the largest living lizard. It can grow to be 10 feet, 3 meters, long, and it can weigh up to 300 pounds, 136 kilograms. The Komodo dragon has been known to attack and kill humans. And sometimes it will even eat members of its own species. But generally its diet consists of carrion, which is the flesh of animals that are already dead. Found on Komodo Island in Indonesia, this lizard has been popular with collectors of rare and exotic animals. And because of that the Komodo dragon is nearly extinct. The Komodo dragon is now protected by laws that prohibit people from hunting or capturing it. Why do leaves turn colors in autumn? In autumn, when leaves are sealed off from the branches on which they grow. And water and minerals can no longer reach them, photosynthesis stops. Once leaves are sealed off, 
their food making chlorophyll the substance. That gives them their green color breaks down, and other colors that were in the leaves all along. Masked by the abundance of green chlorophyll, appear. Colors like yellow and orange show up then. Courtesy of the pigment carotene, which also makes carrots orange. Some of the beautiful fall colors result from pigments formed by chemical reactions that are triggered by the unique weather conditions in the fall cooler temperatures at night and shorter days spark the production of anthrocyanin pigments, which give leaves their red and purple tones. Autumn temperatures also produce red colors by reacting with glucose. A type of sugar trapped in the leaves after photosynthesis has stopped. Changes in the weather affect the brightness of the leaves' colors and the length of time those colors can be seen before the leaves drop off the trees. When temperatures are low but not to the point of freezing more anthrocyanin will be produced. Giving leaves a brilliant red color. Cloudy and rainy days can also result in brighter, bolder fall colors. Which bird has the largest wings? The largest measured wingspan belongs to the wandering albatross. A large seabird that can be seen gliding over southern oceans. When spread, its wings can measure nearly 12 feet, 3.6 meters. Their long, narrow wings allow them to fly great distances with minimal effort. Albatrosses can glide for several hours without flapping their wings once. Their gliding ability helps them save energy. Which comes in handy when they have to fly hundreds of miles in one trip to find food for a just hatched baby. Albatrosses only come to shore for breeding. And they are unusual among birds in that the female only lays one egg each year. Most birds lay several eggs a year. Ducks can lay around 10 eggs at a time, for example. Baby albatrosses require a lot of care from their parents. It can take them almost a year to grow the feathers they need for flying. And during that time the parents must search far and wide to get food for the whole family. Albatrosses eat fish and squid, and sometimes they follow boats, looking for food scraps. At one time sailors believed that killing an albatross brought bad luck. An idea explored in the famous poem by Samuel Taylor Coleridge, The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. Others ignored that superstition, catching the birds on baited fish hooks for their meat and feathers. How do penguins keep their eggs warm? Some penguins lay their eggs in nests like other birds. The emperor and king penguins, however, have an unusual method of keeping their eggs warm. While the female makes a long trek from the penguin colony to the water in search of food. The male places the egg on top of his feet, where it can nestle up against his warm body. For this entire incubation period, the male penguin carefully balances the egg on his feet. 
living off stored fat while he is unable go find food. When a storm hits, all of the male penguins huddle together into a circle to provide some protection from high winds. After the egg hatches, the parent must continue holding it on its feet because the baby doesn't have enough insulating feathers, or down, to keep it warm on its own. When it's old enough, the baby penguin joins a large group of other babies. A few adults stand guard over the little ones while their parents seek food. When the parents return to the colony, they call to their chick. The parents can recognize their baby among the dozens of others by its appearance and its distinctive voice. How big is Earth? Earth, which is almost round in shape, measures 24,901 miles. 39,842 kilometers, around at its widest part, the equator. The equator is the imaginary line that crosses outer space begins about 600 miles. 960 kilometers, above Earth. The planet midway between the North and South Poles. A measurement through Earth at the equator in other words. The planet's diameter reveals that it is 7,926 miles, about 12,700 kilometers, across. Earth's weight, or mass, the amount of matter that makes it, is around 6 sextillion tons. That is 6 with 21 zeros after it. Because Earth cannot be put on an enormous scale to find its weight. Scientists use the laws of gravity and mathematical equations to figure this out. Why are there different religions? From our earliest days, Many people have believed in a power or powers greater than themselves. This belief is known as religion. In ancient times, it was a way to make sense of the mysteries of the natural world. Evil spirits were thought to be responsible for bad weather and disease, for instance. Ancient peoples felt that they had a measure of control over their lives when they made offerings and prayed to friendly spirits. Whom they believed could help them win battles or grow better crops. Even today, when people know the scientific explanations for such things as thunder or the eruption of volcanoes. Many look to religion to explain some of the other hard to understand things that we experience as humans things like the purpose of life or the reasons for tragedies. People look to religion and powers beyond themselves for direction about the best way to lead their lives and for the meaning behind them. While most religions spring from the same basic human need to believe in a great power or powers, the ideas, practices, and traditions that religions involve can be very different. Long ago, groups of people separated by things like deserts, mountains, or great oceans developed special religious beliefs and forms of worship that fit their unique ways of life. Some, like the ancient Greeks, built their religions around a belief in several gods. 
a practice called polytheism, while others, like the Jews, believed in a single god, monotheism. Great temples, shrines, and churches were built to honor these gods. And believers showed their faith through ceremonies, sacred writings, prayers, and other forms of worship. As civilizations developed and ways of traveling long distances improved, different religions were spread by explorers, traders, settlers, and missionaries to other parts of the world. As religions spread, they were frequently changed and adapted into different forms that better fit the conditions and people of various lands. All the major religions of the world Judaism, Christianity, and Islam in the Middle East. Buddhism, Hinduism, and Sikhism in India, Taoism and Confucianism in China. And Shinto in Japan began in Asia before they gradually spread to other parts of the world. Christianity which is based on the teachings of Jesus Christ. Who preached in Palestine about 2000 years ago is the most widely practiced religion in the world today. What causes growing pains? Growing pains usually refers to the aches and pains that children feel in their legs at night when they are lying in bed. Kids seem to get them during growth spurts, times when they are growing a lot. Doctors think that the tendons the tough elastic straps, or bands, that attach muscles to bones of affected children do not grow quite as fast as their bones do. The tendons eventually catch up, but in the meantime this condition puts muscles under extra stress during an active day and causes them to ache and even spasm. Contract abnormally, when they are finally at rest at night. Growing pains are not dangerous. They don't bother children during the day, and they usually come and go at night time. Regular stretching exercises keeping the muscles and tendons relaxed often solve the problem for good. But if the pains are very bad and continue for a long time, a doctor should be seen. In rare cases, an infection, disease, injury, or unnoticed malformation of the legs is causing the problem. If Earth is moving all the time, why don't we feel it? Even though Earth rotates at a startling speed, 1,036 miles 1,668 kilometers per hour at the equator, and orbits the Sun even faster, at 67,000 miles 107,000 kilometers per hour. We don't feel it because the rate of motion is a constant one, never slowing down or speeding up. We can only really feel motion when the speed changes. If you were in a moving car and couldn't see the scenery passing by, couldn't hear the wind blowing, and couldn't feel the car vibrating, you wouldn't be able to tell how fast you were going, or even if you were moving at all. Objects don't fly all over the place when Earth moves because gravity keeps everything firmly in place as the planet orbits and turns.
What are identical twins? When the sperm from a man fertilizes the egg cell of a woman. A baby begins to grow in the woman's body, developing in her uterus, or womb. Through the joint sperm and egg, the man and woman each contribute half of the genes that will give the baby its inherited characteristics, like eye color and height. Once in a while, before the baby begins to grow, the fertilized egg or zygote splits in two, forming two separate zygotes that develop independently. When this happens two babies start to grow inside their mother. The babies will be identical twins, which means they will have the same genes. Be of the same sex and look amazingly alike. Who made up our system of numbers? From earliest times, people have had to keep track of things by counting. Historians believe that people used their fingers and toes, and then notched sticks. And finally number systems to help them count and measure things. The system of numbers that we use is known as a base 10, or decimal. System because it advances in segments of 10, dec means 10. It is believed that such a system is based on finger counting. Two of the most widely used number systems Arabic and Roman are Decimal systems. We use the Arabic system of writing numbers. Europeans learned it from Arabs. Who in turn developed it from the number system used by Hindus in ancient India. But other types of decimal number systems had developed simultaneously in different parts of the world. As early as 4000 BC, Babylonians, who lived in the region that is now Iraq, wrote numbers from left to right and grouped them in tens. Ancient China, too, used a decimal number system. The numeral zero was added to the Arabic system later. It was first used in India and China around AD 600. What is the biggest bone in my body? The longest and strongest bone in the human body is the thigh bone, or femur. In a man 6 feet, 1.8 meters, tall, the femur would measure about 20 inches, 51 centimeters, in length. Leg bones are very strong because they have to carry the weight of the body and move it from one place to another. Do bats really suck blood? There are more than 1,000 different kinds of bats. They live all over the world, except in the coldest regions. Most bats eat insects lots of them helping to protect food crops and other plant life. Some bats also eat fruit, as well as the nectar of flowers. 
there is only one kind of bat that drinks blood. Called the vampire bat, it lives in South America, Central America, and Mexico. Vampire bats are pretty small, their bodies only about 3 inches, 8 centimeters, long. They have big pointed ears and sharp teeth. Which they use to quietly bite their victims while they are sleeping. In the saliva of the vampire bat is a substance known as an anticoagulant. Which keeps the blood from clotting. They often bite livestock farm animals like horses and cows and they like many types of bats, can spread rabies through their bites. What is a rainforest? Rainforests are thick forests of trees and other plants. Found in the lowland areas of the tropics around the world. Rainforests exist in parts of Australia, Indochina, India, the Malay Peninsula, the East Indies, in Central and West Africa, and in Central and South America. Unlike forests in many other parts of the world, which have been affected by global climate changes like the Ice Age. Tropical rainforests have been growing uninterrupted in some places for millions of years. During that time an unimaginable number of different types of plants and animals have evolved to use every food source and live in every spot there. Tropical rainforests have more plant and animal species than the rest of the world combined. And scientists continue to discover new species. Because tropical rainforests are located near the equator, their climate is warm. The name rainforest comes from the fact that they receive a lot of rain between 160 and 400 inches throughout the year. Plants grow very quickly under such ideal conditions. In order to get the sunlight that they need for photosynthesis, the process by which they and other green plants make their own food. Rainforest trees grow very tall, up to 130 feet, 40 meters, high. Their tops form a huge canopy that shades most of the ground. Protecting plants on the ground from excessive sunshine as well as wind. Rainforest trees have very shallow roots, for the soil in which they grow is poor. Having long been depleted of nutrients by the needs of thick plant life over millions of years. But the abundant life all around contributes organic matter, the decomposed remains of plants and animals. To the surface of the soil, which is enough to nourish these grand, ancient forests. Why is it so noisy in big cities? Big cities are so noisy because a lot of people and activities are confined to a relatively small space. Think about the activities that happen in a small neighborhood people talking. Car motors running. Ambulance sirens blaring and multiply that several times over. Because cities are usually centers of manufacturing, business, government, and culture, they attract large numbers of people who live and work there. 
cities are also home to lots of cars and mass transportation vehicles like buses and trains. All of which produce tremendous noise. And noises in a city often seem louder because the sound. Waves bounce back and forth between the many tall buildings. What is a sonic boom? As long as an aircraft is moving at a rate slower than the speed of sound, about 1,120 feet or 340 meters per second, which is known as Mach 1, the air that it disturbs is evenly distributed around it. But as an aircraft approaches Mach 1, the air molecules in front of it become crowded together. The impact made when an aircraft flies through them called breaking the sound. Barrier causes shock waves that reach our ears as a thunderous sonic boom. The aircraft leaves the waves behind as it enters supersonic flight. A supersonic airplane is shaped quite differently than a regular, subsonic plane. It is usually shaped like a dart. With a long pointed nose and wings that swing back and hug the plane body. This slim shape causes less friction as it races through the air. The close set wings also stay within the shock waves the plane creates. Which is necessary to maintain control of the aircraft. While the special wings of supersonic planes don't provide as much lift as those of regular planes. The aircraft get the lift they need for takeoffs and landings by traveling at very high speeds. What is the biggest city in the world? Because most big cities spread out, over time, into the land that surrounds them. It is often hard to say where a city begins and ends. When describing the size of a city which generally refers to its population. Or the number of people that live there sometimes a distinction is made between the city itself. City proper and the built-up areas around it, urban agglomeration. Another problem in finding the largest city in the world is that census is official. Counts of populations are such big and difficult projects that they are only done every decade or so. And a lot of people can come and go in 10 years. According to a 1997 United Nations count, Seoul, the capital city of South Korea in East Asia, is the most populous city in the world. Nearly 10.25 million people live there. When their surrounding urban areas are included in a population count, some of the world's other largest cities are Tokyo. Japan, New York City, United States, Mexico City, Mexico, and Bombay, India. Mexico City is also one of the world's fastest growing cities. Do all children go to school? A lot of children around the world learn to read and write and do arithmetic in places that don't resemble the school that you go to. 
a temple, a tent, or a building on stilts may serve as a classroom. For some children living in very different places around the world. In poor places that have no money to build schools, children may learn their lessons outdoors. In isolated places like the Australian outback or Alaskan wilderness where families live hundreds of miles apart and far from cities and towns children may get there. Lessons from teachers over two-way radios or, in recent years, over the internet. And not all children go to school as we know it, learning lessons from a teacher. Reading, writing, and arithmetic may not be important skills for some children to learn. A child living in the bush in Africa, for instance, may have little use for mathematics. But will need to know how to identify animals' tracks and make bows and arrows for hunting. Parents or other adults will train the child until the skills are learned, acting as teachers. So while not all children learn what they need to in a typical classroom, most learn the skills that are important to their way of life. Children learn all sorts of things inside and outside classrooms. Will a plant grow better if you talk to it? Studies have shown that plants seem to grow better if they are talked to. But plants don't have sound receptors or nervous systems. So scientists know that plants aren't responding to the specific words people say. What do the patches on the uniforms of soldiers mean? For as long as there have been large armies, the personnel of those armies have been divided into various ranks. For such organizations to work effectively, some people have to be in charge and others have to follow their orders. One way to quickly determine who is in charge is to look at the differences in uniform. Particularly the patches and other ornaments on sleeves and shoulders. The patches on a soldier's uniform tell his or her rank. Reflecting the importance of that person's position in the armed services. A beginning soldier might have a patch with a single stripe. As a soldier gains experience and earns promotions, the number of stripes will increase. A symbol that reveals to other soldiers his or her advanced rank. The uniforms of military officers have metal bars, stars, or eagles, depending on the branch of the military. Some enlisted personnel, people who aren't officers, wear chevrons, or stripes in an upside-down V-shape. Some of the medals and patches on a soldier's uniform also symbolize accomplishments. With medals honoring acts of bravery and outstanding service. Do ostriches really bury their heads in sand? This supposed ostrich behavior has been referred to countless times in warning. People not to bury their heads in the sand and ignore their problems. 
but the fact is that ostriches do not bury their heads in sand when danger approaches. They kick up their heels and run. Sometimes, to avoid being seen by nearby predators. The very tall ostrich will lie down and stretch its neck out on the ground. This behavior may have been spotted and misunderstood by people. Who began the tale of an ostrich burying its head in the sand? Ostriches also occasionally nibble on small pebbles or sand. A behavior that may give an observer the impression that they are trying to burrow into the sand. Why do cats have whiskers? The whiskers of a cat are part of its sense of touch. The long stiff hairs are called vibrissae, and, just like our own hairs, they are connected to nerves at their roots that send information to the brain. A house cat usually has 12 whiskers on either side of its nose, as well as a few above its eyes, on its cheeks, and behind its front legs. These long, sensitive whiskers are particularly useful at night, when many cats are most active. They can give a cat information about surroundings that it can barely see. Whiskers can help a cat feel the distance between objects, letting it know if it can pass between them. Some scientists think that cat whiskers are so sensitive that they can feel the air move around objects. Keeping a cat from bumping into them or helping it to travel safely over uneven ground. Why are there so many insects? There are so many insects because they are essential to life on Earth and play many important roles in keeping our planet healthy. Most of the world's flowering plants, about 80%, are pollinated by insects. Insects carry pollen from the male parts of a blossom to the female parts of another plant's flower, allowing reproduction. Most of our fruits and vegetables are the result of this kind of plant reproduction. Insects also feed on the remains of dead plants and animals, keeping our environment clean and returning nitrogen, carbon, and other valuable elements to the soil in their waste. In addition, insects are a vital part of Earth's food chain, providing nourishment for one another. There are many thousands of insect-eating insects. As well as for reptiles and amphibians, for birds and fish, and for mammals, such as mice and bats. In many parts of the world, insects even make up an important part of the human diet. What is the IQ? I Q stands for intelligence quotient And it is supposed to be a measurement of how naturally intelligent a person is Intelligence tests are not designed to show how much a person has learned Rather, they are meant to measure a person's ability to learn. This ability is something that doesn't change much as a person grows older. 
even though he or she may pick up a lot of new facts and skills. Scientists think that each person is born with a certain amount of intelligence or mental ability. Still, how well a person uses his or her natural intelligence has a lot to do with the person's desire to learn and the learning environment in which he or she grows up. IQ tests measure things like the ability to use words, the ability to see how things relate to one another, and the ability to store and use information. But a lot of intelligence experts think that IQ tests are unfair. Because they can't help but test a person's learned knowledge in the phrasing of the questions. Depending on where you grew up or what language is spoken in your home. You may not be familiar with certain words used in some questions. And if you have trouble understanding what's being asked of you. It can be difficult to demonstrate your ability to think and reason. The term intelligence quotient comes from a mathematical equation used to score intelligence tests. A person's mental age which is determined by how many questions he or she answered correctly on such a test is divided by his or her actual age. Then that number is multiplied by 100 to give an IQ score. A person whose mental and actual age are the same will have an IQ that is 100, which is average. Remember that intelligence is just one thing that contributes to a person's ability to succeed in life and be happy. Special talents, hard work, creativity, and character are just as important. What is thunder? Thunder is the sound made by the gases in the air around lightning which are quickly heated and expand when a strike occurs. Put simply, thunder is the sound of hot air exploding. Loud thunder may seem frightening, but it is totally harmless. Why do some flowers smell like perfume? Different chemicals in plants and flowers called essential oils give them their special scents. Flowers have fragrances so they can attract the creatures they need for cross-pollination. Some of the insects and other animals that feed from flowers have keen senses of smell. Bees, for instance, have sensitive odor detectors in their antennae, so most bee flowers are scented. Flowers that open only at night are often strongly scented. To help the creatures that feed from them like moths find them in the dark. Not all flowers have pretty scents, though. Some flowers actually smell like rotten meat or other decaying matter in order to attract flies. Flies usually lay their eggs in decaying materials because that's what hatched fly larvae. The immature stage of a fly, feed on, therefore. Flies are drawn to plants that look and smell, to the fly, anyway, like garbage. Bats that feed on plants are also attracted to flowers that have what we would consider unpleasant scents. Why do some people need to take naps?
young kids need naps to keep them healthy and safe. Their bodies are growing and changing at a rapid rate, which requires a lot of energy. In addition, the world is filled with so many interesting things to discover and so many new skills to learn. And all that stimulation can make a child pretty tired. Whether big or little, people don't perform at their best mentally or physically when they are too tired. Often when you're tired it takes twice as much energy to perform a task that you could easily do if you were rested. Sometimes being too tired makes you less coordinated and clumsy. And you might think less clearly, which could lead you to hurt yourself. Taking a short rest allows your body to slow down for a while so that it can regain the energy it needs to continue performing at its best. If I eat too much food will I get fat? Your body needs food to provide it with the energy it needs to run smoothly and to grow and repair itself. All of this requires calories, which is a measurement of energy. Food provides the calories that make the body run. The amount of calories that a person needs depends a lot on how active he or she is and on whether that individual is still growing. Even though they are smaller than adults, children need comparatively more calories. Because they are so physically active and are always making new body tissue as they grow. If you eat a lot more calories than your body needs for the energy you use each day. Your body will store the extra calories as fat. Having a lot of body fat greatly increases your chances of getting a lot of different diseases. The easiest way to guard against being overweight is to lead a physically active life. Keeping fit through regular exercise like bicycling, swimming. Or participating in team sports like basketball will burn up the calories you eat, keeping you trim. Regular exercise also keeps joints and muscles flexible and strong and the heart and lungs healthy. Exercise seems to make the brain work better, too. In order to lose weight, you have to eat less and exercise more. If you burn more calories than the amount you take in through food each day. Your body will use your stored fat for the energy it needs, and you will lose weight. Increasing your physical activities is one way to accomplish this, another way is to change your diet. By not eating junk food food and drink that are high in fat and sugar but have few of the nutrients that your body needs you will be able to reduce the calories that you take in. Concentrating on foods that are good for you. But remember, the object of dieting is good health, not skinniness. People who make themselves too thin by not eating enough can have very serious health problems.